industry inside a nutshell. The show where we sail into our port of call discussing maritime history. I won't make this intro too long, but I would like to thank my friend Jake for narrating this video, even though we can't get away from him. <laughs> But this video is going to be a short one, but this is a story that I never heard of before, but when Jake mentioned it to me before narrating the video, I knew that this was a video worth watching. So until then, I hope you enjoyed the story of Frances Stevens. Frances Stephens, the woman who sank twice. Imagine if you were travelling on the open ocean and you became a victim of the German captain lieutenant and a submarine twice. People wouldn't believe it, but this was true. It happened to one woman who was sailing on two ships that were sunk by the German U-boat U-20. This woman's name was Frances Stephens, a Canadian philepathist who was travelling with family and two employees when she encountered two fates on the open ocean. Stephens was born on January 27, 1851, and she was the wife of landowner and lawyer George Washington Stephens. Her life isn't well documented, but in 1913, Stephens became a grandmother for a second time and had a grandson named John Harrison Chatton Stephens. Stephens, along with her two-year-old grandson, put first-class tickets onto the RMS Lusitania. They would also travel with her maid, Ellis Alderlin, and nurse Caroline Mile. The party was travelling to England when Stephens learned that her son had fallen ill with trench fever with an inflammation of the heart while serving at the front in Europe. On the 7th of May 1915, Stephens was in the lounge drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes with a group of friends when the German submarine U-20 unleashed a torpedo that struck the ship. After the torpedo struck the Lusitania, it was reported that Francis and her group rushed out on deck and put their life belts on. Unfortunately, the party waited on the port side of the ship as the lifeboats on that side weren't launched successfully. When the Lusitania made her final plunge, Stephens was holding on to her grandson, while other ladies and maids were holding hands with each other. All members of the Stephens party were lost in the sinking. John's body was never recovered. However, Stephens' body was. When it was recovered from the ocean, it was reported that she was wearing her life belt and a string of pearls. When it was recovered, it is believed her pearl necklace was stolen from her body. It was returned one day later. But this story has little evidence to prove it was true. However, it did end up with a relative who lived in England, where it remains today. Four months after the sinking of the Lusitania, Stephen's body was embalmed and scheduled to be returned to the States. Her son-in-law went to Queenstown to identify her body and handle the paperwork so it could be transported to Liverpool. After waiting in Liverpool, Stephen's body was transported on board the Allen Line vessel, the RMS Hespian. While the Hespian was making her way to Montreal on the 6th of September, the RMS Hespian was torpedoed by the same submarine U-20 that sank the Lusitania. The submarine torpedoed the Hespian before she sank off Fastnet Rock in Ireland. But unlike her recovery following the sinking of the Lusitania, Stefan's body following the sinking of the Hespian was never recovered. The story of Francis Stefan's is tragic but coincidental. There is nothing more to say about her, but it goes to show how war can destroy lives whether a person is dead or alive. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe for future videos. Until next time, this has been History Inside a Nutshell, departing from the dogs. Thank you so much for all of your support and enjoy the rest of your voyage.